Hi, I'm Tristan. I'm 13 years old. I'm curious. I'm passionate. And I'm sure you are too. Join me on a quest to dig deep and find out new things. Welcome to Youth Voices. Good evening. Welcome to my program. This is your host, Tristan Pang, on Planet FM 104.6. Youth Voices. Good to have you company on a Saturday evening. In today's show, I'll continue my chat with Matt Cannon, a second-year student at the University of Auckland. I'll also share with you some inspirational quotes and stories. So here we go. Let's be inspired. The bumblebee from the livingtreasure.org According to scientists, the bumblebee's body is too heavy and its wingspan too small. Aerodynamically, the bumblebee cannot fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know this, and it just keeps flying. When you don't know your limitations, you go out and surprise yourself. In hindsight, you wonder if you have any limitations. The only limitations a person has are those that are self-imposed. Don't let any boundaries put limits on you. I started reading fiction and non-fiction books independently before I was two. It's probably about this time I became fascinated by patterns. I then became very interested in mathematics. I kept exploring and discovering new concepts, and the more I learned, the more fascinated I became. Before I was five, I covered all the available national curriculum and NCA math books from year one to year 13. As you can see, I started my education pathway before I was two. I knew nothing about what year levels meant. I simply ignored them and kept exploring upwards in a very in-depth manner. If we don't set any boundaries for our learning, we can go far. Frogs from livingtreasure.org A group of frogs was traveling through the woods and two of them fell into a deep pit. All the other frogs gathered around the pit. When they saw how deep the pit was, they told the two frogs that they were as good as dead. The two frogs ignored the comments and tried to jump out of the pit with all their might. The other frogs kept telling them to stop and that they were as good as dead. Finally, one of the frogs took heed to what the other frogs were saying and gave up. He fell down and died. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could once again, the crowd of frogs yelled at him to stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out, the other frogs said, Did you not hear us? The frog explained to them that he was deaf. He thought that they were encouraging him the entire time. There is power of life and death in the tongue. An encouraging word to someone who is down can lift them up and help them make it through the day. A destructive word to someone who is down can be what it takes to kill him or her. Be careful of what you say. Speak life to those who cross your path. The power of words. It is sometimes hard to understand that an encouraging word can go such a long way. Everyone can speak words that tend to rob another of the spirit to continue in difficult times. Special is the individual who will take the time to encourage another. Let's talk. This is the second part of my interview with Matt Cannon. Matt has an incredible personality that I really look up to. A software engineer and commerce student at the University of Auckland. He has a long list of achievements, both in school and outside school, including deputy head boy at Westlake Boys High School, top of New Zealand in Cambridge ICT exam, and numerous awards and prizes. Despite this, he's very humble. We first met at a presentation last year. I noticed that he could present at the perfect pace. He has a natural charm that engages his audience. He is calm, confident, and patient. He has these characteristics, not only during his presentation, but any time. I always have questions to ask him, and he is always very keen to answer them, and he has never made me feel dumb about myself. He is the type of person who can always make people happy. I'm sure you will feel happy and like him after listening to his interview. I began the second part of my interview by asking Matt, is his personality inborn or has he learned from experiences? And how can we have a great personality? Yeah, I, I, I think the world would be a pretty monotonous place um, without everyone having their own unique personality. I'm, I'm reading a book at the moment by Ed Catmull, who was the, is the former CEO of uh, Pixar Animation. And the book is all about how we can bring creativity into really large organizations that might often seem quite 
bureaucratic or rigid. And, and something he talks a lot about is how um, embracing the differences in people and um, embracing everyone's pers- uh, different personality is really important. So I think, I think it's less of a question, how can we find the right personality, but how can we kind of mould our lifestyle and our career choices um, in, you know, for the personality that we have? Yeah, that's marvelous. Um, so finally, to um, end this interview, I, would, I have two signature questions to conclude with. So um, the first is, can you tell us three people who have influenced you? And so our young listeners can learn from them and why? Yeah, I, I have a lot of um, uh, role models. Um, I have a lot of people that um, have influenced me, but I guess to kind of um, to narrow it down to three, and particularly for younger viewers, um, there was there was one person that I met over in Silicon Valley. Um, his name was Ollie Johnson. He has a pretty um, special story. I met him at the Kiwi landing pad, and the funny thing is, is that he's my age. He's um, oh, at the time he was nineteen, and he um, it, he decided that school wasn't working for him. Um, he decided he wasn't really enjoying school, and he actually just wanted to he wanted to pursue his own dreams, kind of um, go go for his goals rather than doing the traditional thing of going to university. Um, so what he did is he, he left school um, and he, he went over to San Francisco, um, stayed with his uncle, got a spot on the Kiwi landing pad and is um, building an app at the moment um, right, out of, right out of Silicon Valley. So his story is really inspirational, um, especially seeing that he's you know, so close to our age. He's, he's um, only just been 20, I think. Um, the next person, um, although, like I said, there are many, um, is someone a little bit different, um, Travis Pastrana. Travis Pastrana is a um, professional um, action sport athlete. He's, um, his um, show Nitro Circus is um, pretty popular and um, they've toured New Zealand a few times. Um, Travis Pastrana has a really amazing story. He's, um, he's a rally car driver, he's a motocross racer, he's um, an X Games gold medalist. Um, but he's had, to come, he's had to overcome a lot of hardship in his life. He's had a lot of setbacks. Um, there's a fantastic movie um, that he's made called 199 Lives, and it's basically it's all about his story from when he was a child all the way to um, where he is now. Um, it's a fantastic watch, and it's it's kind of um, you know it, it's looking at life from a different perspective of a of a motorsport athlete, but kind of still still looking at how we can overcome hardship and how we can move on in life and still achieve our goals. And the, the final person that I'd like to mention, um, of course, he's had a huge influence on me personally, um, but also in the education space in general is Sal Khan, um, obviously the founder of the Khan Academy, who I, um, or, which I mentioned earlier. Um, Sal's vision of where education is going and how he's acting upon that and really making, making this movement um, is absolutely incredible um and and sal as well because he he's had a um, particularly big influence on my life um i can quite confidently say that if it wasn't for him and and what he set up um i wouldn't be at university studying exactly what i want to right now um you know achieving my goals wow so the three people are ollie travis and sal so we will have to google them yeah, so um, my second signature question is, um, can you share with us something that you've heard or read that really inspired you? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I read a lot and um, there's a lot of things, so it's quite difficult to pick one. Um, the other day I was reading something really interesting about a man called Jack Ma. Um, and Jack Ma is the founder of Alibaba, which is kind of like uh, China's version of Trade Me. Um, the difference being is that they have 100 million shoppers visit their site every day because it, it's just a much bigger market over there. So Jack Ma is currently worth 20.4 billion dollars. He's one of the most richest. Uh, he's one of the most richest people in the world, and uh, he's got a really amazing story. When he was younger, he. Um, he applied for a whole lot of jobs. He couldn't find a job. He applied for 30 jobs and got rejected from every single one of them. Um, there's, there's a story about how he applied for a job um, and KFC, a KFC came into his town, the first one in the town, and uh, 24 people applied for the job and only 23 people got it. He, uh, Jack was the one person that missed out. Um, so it's a pretty incredible story of how, um, again, kind of similar to Travis Pastrana's story of how you can kind of overcome a whole lot of setbacks um, but as long as you keep keep your goal in mind and keep striving for what you believe in 
you can you can do really great things and you can prove everyone wrong. Wow, that's great. We'll also need to Google um, Jack Ma. So um, thank you for taking your time to be interviewed today, Matt. That's no problem at all. Thank you, Tristan. Talking to Matt was really enjoyable. His pleasant personality is contagious. His personality, determination and hard work nature makes him a great and successful person. We would like to hear from you. Please drop us a line on Youth Voices with Tristan Pang Facebook page of what you have learned from Matt or email me at youthvoicesnz at gmail.com. Let's quote. Our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time by Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison tried 2,000 different materials in search of a filament for the light bulb. When none worked to his satisfaction, his assistant complained. All our work is in vain. We have learned nothing. Edison replied very confidently, Oh, we have come a long way, and we have learnt a lot. We know that there are 2,000 materials which we cannot use to make a good light bulb. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just don't repeat the same mistakes again. No one in the world can succeed on our first attempt. Learning things from mistakes can only lead to success. When mistakes happen, they're painful. But years later, collection of mistakes leads to success, which is called experience. Let's explore. Did you know it took early humans 110,000 generations of using stone tools before controlling fire, and another 20,000 generations until written language was invented, and only another 250 generations until we put a man on the moon, and in two or three generations, humans went from barely having electricity to having the internet, and in a single generation, went from slow mainframe computers to the incredible smartphones of today. Let's laugh. <laughs> While my dad was visiting, he asked for the password to our Wi-Fi. It's taped under the modem, I told him. After three failed attempts to log on, he asked, Am I spelling this right? T-A-P-E-D-U-N-D-E-R-T-H-E-M-O-D-E-M. <laughs> Texting acronyms can stump even the best parents. A mum said, your great aunt just passed away, lol. The son asked, what is so funny? It's not funny, David. What do you mean? Mum, lol means laugh out loud. Oh, I thought it meant lots of love. I'll have to call everyone back. <laughs> mum asked, what do IDK, LY and TTYL mean? The son said, I don't know, love you. Talk to you later. Okay, I'll ask your sister. <laughs> a couple were going on vacation, but the wife was on a business trip, so the man went to the destination first, and his wife would meet him the next day. When he reached his hotel, he decided to send his wife a quick email. Unfortunately, when typing her address, he mistyped a letter, and his note was directed instead to an elderly preacher's wife, whose husband had passed away only the day before. When the griefing widow checked her email, she took one look at the monitor, let out a piercing scream, and fell to the floor in a dead faint. At that sound, her family rushed into the room and saw the note on the screen. Just got checked in. Everything prepared for your arrival tomorrow. P.S. Sure, it's hot down here. <laughs> the jokes are from rd.com and academictips.org. We thank you, Matt, for coming for the final part of the interview today. If you have missed the first part of the, his interview, please click onto my website, www.quizisfun.org.nz slash youthvoices. So for today, that's from me, Tristan Pang. Thank you for listening. I welcome your feedback and your support of the program. Please write to me on Facebook or email me to youthvoicesnz at gmail.com. Don't forget to like Youth Voices with Tristan Pang on Facebook. I hope you're having a good break. Good night. Again next Saturday at 5:20 p.m. to dig deeper, or listen anytime online at planetaudio.org.nz/youthvoices. Youth Voices.